so uh, two of the tips on the plow uh, broke off probably on one of the rocks in the field uh, so I'm gonna change those uh, and I ordered also the plow shears as well because uh, they are so worn down they should have been changed years ago uh, this plow isn't used so much it's not my plow I've borrowed it and and uh, the one who owns it doesn't use it anymore he used to have a farm but uh, he doesn't anymore so also the nuts and the bolts are so worn down so I can't use any uh, tools to get them off I'm gonna I cut them so I'm gonna try with these tools to to cleave them so it's a little bit later in life now I went to get the bigger disc for the angle grinder I only had the small one and that's why I tried that and it didn't work uh, this is gonna work I'm gonna just cut the bolts actually thought these were uh, washers but they aren't they seem to be part of the bolt And this part here is called the saddle. It wraps around and it's, it's attached to the beam here and it wraps around just in front of it. And all the all parts of the body of the plow are attached to this, uh, this saddle here. So it holds together all, all of these parts. And because all these parts are, are uh, wear items, so you can change them. You're, you have to change them eventually because they get sanded down by the, by the soil. You can see here, I don't know if the camera can see it, but this, the land side, this part is called the land side, and it's uh, uh, much thinner here than it is here. So, and, and that's typical, it, it wears down uh, quicker in the back here, because there is more pressure. Obviously there is more pressure in the back because the wing pushes away the tail in the back. As you can see here, there, it's not the saddle is not worn anything basically, so it still has its edges, uh, and uh, that's great because if the plowshare had been worn too much, uh, the saddle might start to wear uh, down, and eventually you have to change that too, and that would suck because you had have to disassemble the whole plow body to to get the saddle. So eventually, I got these parts. I ordered the new shares and. Uh, the tips and it, it took a, a while to get them but uh, here they are so we're just gonna try to attach these this is the underside of it and it's uh, yeah these bolts don't have a have a head <clears throat> instead they are they aren't really round you can see that so they fit into this hole and gets locked there. As you can see the 
the new plowshare was uh, it, it's a lot wider and that's uh, that's gonna be great all right that was a lot of work but I've done all three now I didn't film the uh, the last two ones because it's just the same thing two times more the fitment isn't uh, exact uh, and I'm not sure about that but it doesn't really matter this uh, part here is higher than this so the soil is just gonna slide over the gap yeah but that's about it I'm just gonna wash it and uh, uh, grease it up and then I'm gonna go give it back to the owner uh, so he can put it in the storage for the winter so I kind of promised uh, someone to to explain the thing with the top link and uh, the difference between a mounted and a semi-mounted plow uh, the thing I was talking about but didn't talk about in the previous uh, video one of the previous videos it has this uh, oval hole which I use for the top link uh, and it gives some leeway uh, to make it act like a, uh, a semi-mounted plow when in the ground uh, when I lift it it kind of comes to the end of the oval hole and it again kind of behaves, behaves like a mounted plow it is a mounted plow because it's uh, it is and a semi-mounted plow has doesn't have a top link. It doesn't use a top link. Instead, it just you just lift the arms, and then it has a contraption for the uh, the depth wheel. On a semi-mounted plow, it also acts as a transport wheel. So you uh, push it push it down hydraulically to lift the plow, the back end of the plow, and the front is lifted with the arms. The difference has to do with how the the uh, uh, geometry of the lift arms how that works how it's supposed to function and the top link has to be set up the way it kind of is set up now uh, it's it should be leaning down sloping down so that an extended line from it would meet the ground right beneath the front axle the geometry will then allow the plow to follow uh, the curvature of the ground when you go across bumps and whatever otherwise when the front wheel goes down after a bump uh, the plow would dig into the ground if the arms and the top link is parallel it will dig in if it isn't it won't so I, I made this little thing here to show you di the difference so this is the tractor the pen is the tractor oh, these are pens as well but this pen is the tractor and so when you lift the plow you see that both are stretched and it kind of wants to turn up even if this one is is uh, perfectly vertical and when it goes down in the ground it kind of slopes upwards it lowers the back end so when the tractor goes over curvature in the ground uh, it will lean forward or backwards and when it leans forwards uh, it will uh, lower the arms it will follow the ground so it will lower itself and lean backwards so it will follow the curvature uh, the top link slope uh, and and this uh, this difference this unparallelity it, it's uh, it's very important the point with the oval hole is just to let it let it work independent from the tractor and to make this work like a semi-mounted plow you need to have the oval hole uh, for the top link and you need to have the uh, the wheel the depth wheel you need to have it all the way uh, in the rear of the plow next to the last uh, uh, the last plowshare this top link geometry thing also helps uh, all implements in in the way that they lift the rear end higher than the front end so uh, you can traverse uneven terrain better uh, without the implement touching the ground right so that's all there is to it i've got nothing more to say in this video so i'm just gonna stop now